I'm going to be running through my beauty favorites from the month of October and this includes, you know, skincare, hair care, body and makeup products that I've either fallen for this month or that I've rediscovered and kept reaching for. If you've been following my Instagram stories, then some of these may not be surprises to you, but otherwise just hang on for the ride. first item that has been getting a ton of use in the past month is the Peter Thomas Roth Hungarian Thermal Water Mask. And what I love about this is that it only takes 2-3 to three minutes for a mini flash facial. Scoop out a little bit, spread it around your face and then you start massaging. It will just melt in, it feels really nice and silky and very nourishing as well. So after about 2-3 or three minutes of letting it sit, you wet your fingers and then you start massaging. And what this does is you get this flash of heat and the mask heats up. Uh, it opens your pores and instead of pulling or extracting dirt like some of the old traditional self-heating masks used to, this one actually uses the mechanism to send nutrients and minerals deep into the skin, which I love and it just feels so, so comfortable. It wakes up my skin. Um, I have sort of semi-dry skin, especially in the morning, it's really, really dry. And when I use this, it feels like I'm really nourishing my skin. I don't have 20 minutes to sit around in the morning. So this has been a godsend for me. And it's really allowed me to up my masking game because most of the time I'll just forget about it or I'll look at the mask and I think, mm, I don't have 20, 30 minutes. This shortens the entire process to two to three minutes. There's no excuse. I use this pretty much every day. I know many of you are waiting for my take on some of the Drunk Elephant products. Uh, since the brand is going to be launching in Singapore in a few days time. I've only been incorporating them item by item into my routine in the past week or so, so I haven't tested the full range. And the ones that I've started using, I haven't used long enough to be confident about giving a review. Uh, what I can say is I like the protein cream. Um, I quite like the sunblock, but I don't like that it's SPF 30 plus. I feel if you're going to go to the effort of putting on sunscreen, might as well just make it 50. The Marula Luxury Face Oil is pretty nice and uh, the Glycolic Night Serum from Boost, mm, it's nice but it hasn't wowed me yet. What I like about it is that it's a blend of AHA and DHA, so you not only have glycolic acid but also um, stuff like salicylic acid that can actually clear out your pores. But that said, I haven't woken up and gone to look at myself in the mirror and gone, wow, my skin looks great. The way that I have with Sunday Riley, good jeans, uh, they've not caused any negative reactions for me yet. But I haven't been wowed. Of course, I do need to remind you, I've only been using these for a few days. So it's a bit early to give my opinion on them. Another item that I've been reaching for repeatedly in the past week or two has been the Kokori Coconut Melt. Now this is pretty pricey for what it is. It's pure coconut oil, uh, the unrefined kind. So it smells gorgeous, it smells like coconut dessert. Um, I use this on my hair, not really on my... You can use it on your face and body as well, but I like it in my hair because um, coconut oil has molecules that are small enough to penetrate the hair shaft. So they really condition and soften your hair. Uh, what I do with this is I'll, you know, sort of massage it into my hair and then leave it for one or two hours. I'll go do chores, I'll go for a workout, and then I come back and I shampoo and I condition as per normal. And your hair feels really soft after that. If you are just trying it out for the first time, you're not sure if you like it, then maybe it makes sense to get a small bottle like this so you don't waste anything. But to be completely honest, you can go on iHerb.com and find um, large jars and bottles of coconut oil, pure coconut oil, for about 10, 15, 20 bucks. This may not be the most economical choice. Copri has another coconut-based product that I really highly recommend, and it is their coconut face cream. Now imagine getting um, lots of really great plant oils like shea butter and coconut oil, sunflower oil, camellia oil, mixing all these together with um, other antioxidant extracts, you know, different fruits and plants, throw in some aloe, some water, whip it up into a very light cream that doesn't feel oily on the skin, and you have this. It's very nourishing, but it doesn't feel greasy. It doesn't leave a film on the face. And if you're out and about, it's great for the body. 
You can even use it in your hair when you're out to get some moisture in there without weighing everything down. It looks very unassuming, a little bit plain and boring in the tube, but don't sleep on it. Go check it out. Now, those of you who followed me for a long time know that I'm not big on primers in general. I've always been of the opinion that if you need a primer to make your foundation work, you're probably using the wrong foundation for your skin. Having said that, I have been really enjoying the Maman Aqua Glow Ball Primer number no. 2. This is the one with the gold flex in there. Um, it is very hydrating, it's very smoothing. It feels almost like a tacky lotion. And for someone like me, whose skin gets sort of drier and drier as the day progresses, uh, it's been really good for helping makeup to cling on a bit longer. I did notice that when I use this, um, things like matte foundations tend to look fresher for a longer period of time, whereas um, usually they might start to look a little bit dry and patchy on me. And things like um, cushion foundations, which wear away very easily because they're so hydrating, those also seem to last a little bit longer. Now foundations, there have been two that I've been reaching for repeatedly. And one is the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Compact. Uh, this is a matte powder foundation that has really, really full coverage. Uh, my shade is Y225. This is very perfecting and it's one of those powder foundations that um, starts to look a little bit better over the day as it heats up and melts into your skin more. Uh, when you just apply it, it does look a bit heavy. But on the days when I need to be out for hours and hours and I need to look really, you know, beat, this is the one. Uh, the other one I featured in one of my previous videos and I was pretty amazed at how it set and how it blended and how it lasted through the day and it's the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Stick Foundation. Um, I have two shades in this because I got my first tube at an event and they matched me to buff but I realized it was just a slight bit too deep for me, uh, a little bit too orange as well. So I went and got Bisque which is slightly paler and slightly more yellow than my skin tone, so when I blend the two together, it's a perfect match. They were not kidding when they called it a seamless foundation stick, because when you blend it on, it just sort of just sinks into your skin, and there's this veil of coverage, but it doesn't change your skin texture, it doesn't look like you're wearing very obvious makeup. I tend to use this for spot coverage more than on my entire face because I just love how portable and how convenient it is. You know, if I just need a little bit of a touch up here or there, or I think I need a little bit of concealing in certain areas, I can just pop this on and blend it out. Again, I'm not the kind that feels you should apply foundation across your entire face just because. I feel you should apply it where you need it and, you know, if it looks like skin everywhere else, you automatically look like you're not wearing much makeup, it just looks like great skin. And this is perfect for that because it just blends in very nicely even if you use it only in certain areas. I do want to give a shout out to the Innisfree My Foundation range. Uh, this is the one that I spoke about in my last video and you can go in and choose your shade, you can choose the coverage level that you want and the finish you want as well, whether it's glowy, whether it's semi-matte or fully matte. So I think it's great, I just haven't used it long enough to consider it one of my like top favourites for the past month. Now a highlighting stick, the Mamon Creamy Multicolor Balm in 06 Rose Gold. Uh, I used this in my last video, so if you want to see how it looks on the skin, it looks gorgeous, creates that glass-like effect. Um, you can go check out that video. The thing about this is I tend to use it as a base for powder highlights. You know, I have dry skin and sometimes if you've already powdered your makeup before applying that, um, your powder highlighters don't stick, you know, it seems to diffuse and disappear. This applied beforehand in a very light layer makes your highlights not just pop but also stay on for an entire day. Now, this next item is not for everyone. It's the Anastasia Dream Glow Kit, the one with the super sparkly six shades of highlighter. It looks crazy. It looks like pixie dust on your face. Like I said before, this is not strictly a highlighting palette. It's more like a sparkle palette. And I just love it. I don't know why. I've uh, worn it to a few events, you know, uh, evening soirees and all that. But I've also worn it to the office because I just love that little bit of sparkle. You can do a completely neutral face and you just have a tiny, tiny little bit of this sparkling along your cheekbone. And it just catches the light. It just makes your day better, makes your life better. 
Well, the case for this is that you can also use this as an eyeshadow, you can use this as a lip topper. You don't have to keep it to just your cheeks. In any case, I bought this because I wanted something different and I really wasn't expecting to like it and use it as much as I did. Now, eye makeup. Few of you might be surprised, but the Natasha Denona Mini Star Palette has been something that I've reached for repeatedly in the past one or two weeks despite owning the full-size version, which uh, most people consider to be better quality. I've done the live side-by-side -side swatches of these five shades uh, from here versus from inside here, and I will confirm that they are made slightly differently. Some of the colours are not exactly the same, um, like this matte peachy beige here and the old gold shade here. They are not exactly the same shades as what you get in the star palette. Is it a drop in overall quality? No. These are just made differently. Maybe they are made in a different factory, maybe Natasha didn't know to change the formulation slightly. Um, there are many many reasons why a brand would do that. It's not necessarily to cheat consumers and you know substitute something of poorer quality for the same price. It could be a minimum quantity requirement uh, before this factory would produce these. It could also be that the original factory was not able to manufacture the components or work with things of this sizing. Tons of possible reasons. To me, the main thing is that the overall quality is good and I enjoy using this. The only shade from here that I would say is not as good as the one here is this old gold shade. It's a little bit duller, it feels like they used a little bit less of those chroma crystal pigments that make it really shine. Does this mean that this is not a good quality shadow and it doesn't work well? No, it still works perfectly well, it's just not as shiny as the one in the original palette. To me the important thing is not whether every single shade in here is exactly the same as the one in here. End of the day, is this a good palette? Yes. Are the shades beautiful? Yes. Is it easier for most people to use something like this than something like this? Yes. Now, if you love this so much that you cannot bear the thought of any of the shades being different in here, just get this. One random single shadow uh, is Luxe's Noir, N-O-I-R. This is one of their multi-chrome shadows. If you look at it, it's like um, silver and blue and violet, depending on where the light hits it. Look at that. Now, ever since I changed my hair colour, it's been a chance for me to pull out a lot of uh, blue and cool tone shades that I have not been reaching for a lot. And this has just stuck out as being one of the best shades for you know any occasion and any look. Um, I wore this over my entire lid a few days ago for an Estee Lauder event. Uh, I'll insert a clip of the eye look here. And then today, I did a fully matte eye just all brown, all neutral, and then I popped this right in the inner corners as a highlight instead of using like a pale champagne shade, which I would usually do. And it's like an inner corner highlight with a twist. It's a very easy way to incorporate a little bit of colour and twist into your makeup and keep things fun without going overboard. It's just a beautiful soft periwinkle blue shade that is flattering on so many skin tones because it's not too bright, it's not too garish, it's not too green. They're just a few bucks a piece and she has amazing colour so I highly suggest you take a look if you haven't. Now, eye pencils. I was not expecting to like the Hera eye designer pencils as much as I did but the first moment that I stroked it onto my lids, I was like wow. These are super creamy, they're super pigmented, they seem to last pretty well on me. I cannot vouch for how well these would perform in very oily lids because my lids are a bit dry, but they've stayed on pretty well on my waterline, I've not had any issues with them, they have not made my eyes itch. And I think the, the best thing about these is, you know, some liners um, seem to be intense, but then after you've got a full eye of makeup on and there's powder on your lid, you try to apply the pencils and the colour just doesn't go on. That never happens with these. They just go on like butter. Now, Nars Climax Mascara. I think just from the name, you'd expect like pow lashes from the get-go and this is not it. It's sort of a wetter formula mascara, so it takes a little bit more time to build it up. But not a whole lot of time. I think I can get really dramatic lashes with just two coats of this. 
and um, I tend to prefer wet formulas because they stay good for a much longer time. You know some mascaras look really good but in about a week's time after you open the tube, they start to look clumpy or dry, they're not building up nicely on the lashes anymore. Uh, wet formula mascaras tend to get a little bit better as they age, so you get more bang for your buck, I feel. No mascaras stay consistent from the day you open them to the day you throw them out, so just bear that in mind. Now lips, lips, lips. One thing I've really been enjoying from the drugstore is these Make Up Face Velvet Scandal Lip Creams. They are meant to be matte, but they're not kiss-proof. Um, the brand focuses very much on comfortable feeding formulas that nourish and condition the skin, so this feels extremely comfortable on the lips for however many hours you want to wear them. And I don't mind a little bit of a stain on my glass or in my food. I don't mind touching up. There are only three colours, which is a bit of a con with these, but all three colours are so flattering. They're kind of pinky, corally, my lips but better kind of colours. Uh, not bright pink, not bright coral. Everything has a little bit of a neutral beige undertone to it, so it's very flattering, it's very easy to wear. Now, my top, top, top favourite lip product for the past month though has to be Shu Uemura Matte Supreme Liquid Lipsticks. Same as the Naked Face ones, these don't set 100%. They do dry down a bit and they become a little bit more kiss proof, but they will still leave slight stains on your cups. But these feel so comfortable, they feel so lightweight on the lips that it's... I still get surprised when I see myself in the mirror while I'm wearing these because you just don't expect them to be so intense and so opaque given how light they feel. They go on like a lightweight gel almost, but it's full pigment, full opacity. And the colours are just drop dead gorgeous. Every single one of these has a little bit of an earth tone in there, so it sits really well on skin. And they're so flattering. Now, if you like the intensity and the drama of matte liquid lipsticks, but you don't necessarily like how they sit and how they feel on your lips, highly, highly suggest you go and try some of these. I received five shades in PR, and I went out and bought three more. That is true love. Last thing, scents. I have two that I've been reaching for quite often this month, and one is Dior Addict. Now, this I've been using for a few years, and you can see how little I have left of this bottle. It's like, I have this much left. And it's a heavier scent. Actually, both the scents that I will be talking about today are better for cool weather. Um, on hot days, I stick with the fresh stuff, like I always do, but when I think of fall fragrances, I tend to think of, you know, spices, smoke, a little bit more depth, a little bit more thickness and coziness. So something like this really hits the spot for me. Uh, it's like a very thick, vanillic floral. I won't call it like a vanilla vanilla scent. I don't consider it a gourmand scent. It's not that heavily into the foody category. Uh, it's very much more of a floral, with some hints of edibility in there. Uh, the original version of this was formulated with a night-blooming flower called Queen of Night, and it's a very heavy, very strong, very lush tropical flower. I remember back in school, one of my good friends used to wear this, the original addict. Back then, I wasn't into heavier scents, but somehow or other, the, the scent just was unique enough to stay with me, and over the years as I smelt it, I grew to like it more and more and more, and then now I just love it. You just want to use this with a light hand if you're living in a warm place, uh, because it can be a bit overpowering. I would suggest, you know, misting the air in front of you walking through it. That leaves a very nice light veil. I would call it a very mysterious, very dark floral. It's sweet, but it's not like dessert sweet. It's like, um, some very dangerous and exotic bloom that only flowers at night. There's also a little bit of an orangey tang in there that adds some freshness and translucency, but overall, it's quite a rich set. Now, the next one that I'm obsessed with is Maison Margiela, and this is their replica perfume in By the Fireside. I'm not sure how many of you have smelt Marshmallow Fireside by Bath & Body Works, that is like, hands down, one of my favourite candles when I go there. It's only available during Christmas season, I believe. 
this is marshmallow fireside but grown up now what it smells like okay is imagine you're sitting by the fireplace it's a crackling fireplace you know you smell the charred wood a little smokiness but you know nice smokiness not like you know exhaust after you smell the smokiness you suddenly get hit by this toasty yummy nutty smell and then you realize it's the chestnuts so it's almost like you're slow roasting chestnuts you smell the nuttiness and then when you toast things and some of the sugars in there start to burn you get that caramelized smell it's so good i consider this to be a gourmand scent you know like foodie category but the smoke keeps it from being overly sugary and chestnuts aren't too sugary to begin with anyway it's not like you know this smells like chocolate dessert it just smells it's a sophisticated one. There's a little bit of bitterness to it. It's definitely not something I enjoy wearing on hot days. But you know, when it's rainy or if you're going out in the evening or it's a little bit cold, you know, you spray this on yourself or around the room, and it just feels like. And none of us have fireplaces in Singapore. It's just way too hot. But this is a way to get transported to another place without having to travel. And that's it for my October favorites. I hope I didn't ramble on too much and I hope you found some things that might be interesting to check out. If you have any favourites that you've been obsessing over in the past month, please hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.